Hello you gorgeous Gadotians and unified Unitarians and welcome to the video by Game, game Dev game journey. journey. Today we will be making a ball bounce up and down. This is a good introduction to physics bodies in game development and will help you to understand how they work. If you're new here, welcome and thanks for stopping by. I make short videos on the basics of game development to help you make a start on your first game. If you enjoy the video, please give it a like and consider subscribing if you want to see more from me in the future. The footage in the background is of the game Hi Tea by Richard Hornig. You can check it out by following the link in the description. On to today's video! There are three types of physics bodies. The first is a static body. This is one that is not moved by the physics engine. It participates in collision detection, but does not move in response to the collision. They are most often used for objects that are part of the environment or the game world, objects that do not need to have any dynamic behavior. These are generally used for the ground or the platform that the player moves around on, perhaps walls, obstacles, and barriers. The second type is a kinematic body. This is a body that provides collision detection but no physics. All movement and collision response must be implemented in code. These bodies are generally used for the player character so that they can interact with the environment of the game world. The third type is a rigid body. This implements simulated physics. You do not control the rigid body directly, but instead you apply forces to it, gravity, impulses, and so on. The physics engine calculates the result in movement. Let's experiment with static bodies and rigid bodies in Unity and Godot. Start by adding a 2D node. This will be the root of our scene. Let's call it the world. Now, add a texture rect for the background. I'm going to add a background I've already found. Let's scale it to fit the size of the viewport. Make sure to expand. This is our stage. Let's save it. Now, create a new scene, add a root node, let's call this the ball. Now, let's add our rigid body. Let's give the rigid body a sprite and add a ball texture. Now, we'll add a collision shape. And let's choose a circle shape. We'll resize it so that the hitbox matches the ball. Let's make sure to add a physics material and set the bounce to 1. Let's save our scene as the ball. Let's create a new scene, add a root node, and call this the ground. Let's add a static body. Let's give a sprite so that we can add a ground texture. Let's reposition it. Now we must add a collision shape. And let's choose a rectangle shape. Let's resize it so that it fits the ground nicely. A 
doesn't have to be perfect. Let's save our ground scene and head back to the world. Now we'll instance the ball and the ground in our world. Reposition the ground. Let's add the ball. And let's run it. We should select the world as the main scene. And there we have a bouncing ball. Let's see how the process compares in Unity. Start by adding the background as a sprite. Add the ground as a sprite as well. Make sure that it's the front layer. Now add the ball as a sprite. Also making sure it's the first layer. Now let's add a rigid body to the ball. And let's add a Circle Collider. Let's just make sure that it fits. Now add a physics material. So we create a 2D physics material. Let's call it bouncy ball material and let's set the bounciness to 1. Now we attach this bouncy ball material to the ball. For collision detection change it to continuous. Now let's add a box collider to the ground. And let's test. There we have a bouncy ball. So there we have it folks. Comment down below and tell me your thoughts on the two engines. Consider subscribing if you want to see more from me. It really does encourage me to keep making videos. And if you enjoyed it, like the video. Hope to see you again next time. Goodbye.